My name is Bob McBride. I'm the Territory Manager for Purple Wave. Today it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Kenny Knight. Uh, we have the pleasure of conducting Kenny Knight's uh, Farming Operation Retirement Auction on February 13th of 2018 via full line of equipment from harvesting tractors, tillage equipment, right down to the support assets uh, involved in the farming operation. Kenny, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Knight Farms and the history around it? Well, I, I came back to the farm in 1960, uh, farmed on my own and rented some ground. During that time, traded work with my dad and my brother. In 1962, we kind of got together and uh, decided it would be better if we just threw everything in one pot and uh, uh, farm together. And uh, that's when <clears throat> Night Farms was created. Uh, we didn't incorporate for a few years after that, but we Night Farms started in, in 1962 with my dad and my brother and myself. Our dad died in 1970, so he wasn't with us very long, but uh, uh, <clears throat> my brother and I continued on and uh, began to grow the operation. 1972, we, <clears throat> we decided to start building a feed yard, and uh, I actually came into the feed yard and my brother ran the farming operation. In 1982, he decided to move to San Antonio. Suddenly I was pretty busy, but we're still partners. He still comes up for harvest. Uh, it's been a great partnership. Uh, it's a little bit unusual for two brothers to be able to work together that long. Never had an argument we didn't resolve. So we're pretty proud of that. We just uh, kind of continued growing as uh, as the opportunities came along. Apparently some of the neighbors thought we were doing a decent job and as they retired they wanted us to farm from the ground. Over the years we bought most of that. So that that's kind of how we got got started and just getting up and going to work every day. So over 50 years here in the town of Lyons in Rice County, Kansas. Right, right. And to give the folks uh, at home a, a sense of the, the size of the enterprise, you started uh, over 50 years ago with how many acres did you farm then, roughly? Oh, probably uh, 500. 500 acres. And so fast forward to today, 50 plus years later, the size of the enterprise is it's uh, it's between 11 and 12,000 acres today we we got to about 12,000 acres and then we backed off a little thinking that we we needed to we were farming more than we were doing a good job with and so we backed off a little but <clears throat> I think as we finished up it's a little over 11 11,000 acres and what type of crops do you produce here we've We've uh, basically, we're in wheat country, obviously, and uh, we raise wheat, irrigated corn, some dryland corn, quite a bit of milo, soybeans, raised quite a little alfalfa because of the feed yard, and uh, chopped a lot of corn silage. So it's just, just a kind of a common crops in this area. Do you mind sharing uh, why you've chose to sell the assets and retire at this time? Well, I don't have any. I don't have any family coming on that that wants to be on the farm. Uh, uh, Brother Don doesn't have any family that wants to farm. As I look around at different farming operations, I've never seen one very successful that didn't have family in the game, with skin in the game, and uh, it's, it's a different than a lot of businesses. It's not an eight to five, and, and uh, you kind of got to have some ownership to, to enjoy that. So, felt like it would be better to liquidate, 
rather than when I wasn't able to help do that. And uh, didn't want to leave that to my wife and attorneys and so forth. With that said then, you're still very actively involved in the farming operation right up to this day. Well, I haven't spent my full time on the farm because I've been in the feed yard uh, a lot of the time. My, my activity with the farming operation the last few years has just been on a combine. I think I was, I spent 40 days on a combine in 1917, or 2017, and uh, uh, that's something I love to do, and, uh, but other than that, I, I haven't been making the day-to-day -day calls on, on the farming operation. In terms of overall management of the business enterprise, though, you're still heavily involved. I kind of keep my eye on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many people, full and part-time, does Night Farms employ? We've got uh, five full-time, and then we've been having, not counting myself or any of the office, then we've been using about five uh, South Africans for summer help, and have done that for a while. But uh, as far as how many permanent employees we have, we don't have that many, five or five or six. I, I'd have to count up a little bit. But Kenny, when did you decide to uh, close down the farming operation? The decision wasn't made till June of this year, this, at 17. My brother was here for harvest. We discussed some things. Uh, nobody coming on, none of his family, none of my family, thinking that it, it was probably time to pull the plug. And uh, no, we hadn't planted in January, or February, or March. We, we spent about a month in, the, in wheat harvest at, time before and after wheat harvest discussing it and that's that's when the decision was made so for prospective bidders in your auction uh, i think it's important to note just what you said that the decision to retire and close the farming enterprise was in june of 2017 so as a potential bidder i think it's fair to say that uh, and factual that this equipment uh, is in the maintenance and replacement cycle of any enterprise you know of this size uh, mr. Knight wasn't planning on retiring or closing the farming operation a year or two ago or maybe the equipment would reflect such a decision this operation was in full swing uh, it still is quite honestly um, but this year um, just as he stated, um, he chose to close out the farming operation. Kenny, can you tell us a little bit about the maintenance schedule of your machinery and equipment? The more simple maintenance we do, we've done ourselves for years. We keep pretty good maintenance records, oil changes, and so forth. We keep some parts on hand, uh, stuff that that we think we're capable of handling. We did, just before we harvest, took all three machines in to, to go through, a, of the combines, to go through an in-depth uh, look at the machines and come back and tell us what they needed and what, and what we could do and what they had to do for us. I've never enjoyed a breakdown during harvest. So we've kind of operated with the idea that the maintenance needs to be done properly and timely, and uh, maintenance in the field isn't very exciting for me, so we've, we've chosen to put an emphasis on that, and I, I think we have. I think, we've, I think the guys have done a very good job with that. <clears throat> We're sitting here with two 30-plus year employees that have been pretty faithful. They've been awfully good at taking care of the equipment and uh, saying that it's cared for. Uh, 
that, that, that's a big part of it also. Today, is it fair to say all of the equipment and machinery and support equipment is field ready? We think they're field ready. If they're not, we've missed something, but uh, our guys don't miss very much. We found a bearing on the combine, on one of the combines that looked like was fixing to go out. It was in an area where you couldn't see it, but we replaced it just as if we were going to the field with it. I, I, believe, I believe them to be ready. Is your service interval standard? I'm not exactly sure what standard is, but uh, uh, whatever deer recommends, that's what we've been doing. And uh, we looked at all the hour meters before we started this process 60 days ago, and if they were getting close to needing an oil change, they got it then. We did it then just like we would if we were going right on. Uh, up to the fact that we've, we've serviced I think three tractors and a combine since we quit using them because hour wise it, it was time for a service. So they've they've been serviced uh, and not used yet. Kenny, why did you choose Purple Wave to conduct your auction? I think this is the first the fifth sale that we've had with Purple Wave. Uh, <clears throat> The first one was a little cleanup sale uh, we had several years ago. <clears throat> we had a, feed, a small feed yard in the San Antonio area that my brother ran. When we closed that, we had a Purple Wave sale. We were satisfied. When son Phil had to, had to sell out, Purple Wave handled that. I believe the the bank told me that the equipment brought 120,000 more than they expected it to. Had another sale week when we uh, dispersed our cow herd over southwest of Topeka. Wasn't a lot of equipment, but what we had, Purple Wave sold, and we were satisfied. Uh, actually, more than satisfied. And I believe the internet sales are are the way the industry is going to go. So that's that's. That's why we chose Purple Wave. Kenny, if somebody wants to view any of the items being sold prior to the auction, what do they need to do? We're prepared to, to, to be on site eight to five, five days a week. On the weekends, uh, we'd, we'd prefer appointment only. Uh, but uh, eight to five, five days a week. and. Uh, uh, we'll be here to, to answer questions and, and show the equipment. If I were a buyer, I'd want the opportunity to look at it a little better than, than just a couple times. So I, I believe that's, that's the right way to do it. So we have open inspection Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Saturdays, by appointment only. And in addition to that, we'll have two open house mass public showings on February 7th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then February 12th, the day before the auction will close, February 12th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. When the auction's concluded, will you have staff for loadout? We will. We'll have uh, at least two people here for two weeks after this sale <clears throat> with forklift, pallet forks on a tractor and we, we should be able to handle that. Let's talk a little bit about some of the highlight pieces in the auction. We have three 2013 John Deere S670S STS combines purchased new in 2013. Those three combines during wheat harvest are, have been run by the same three people since they were new. Myself, my brother, and Brian. But it's not like a custom harvest operation where every George gets on the combine. And uh, I expect we could ask Bobby, if something starts to sound a little different and you're used to running that thing, you've got a better chance of, 
catching it early and and uh, if I were buying a combine I would prefer something like that rather than uh, we might have near the same hours as some custom harvesters but it's not quite the same there were three 2013 John Deere 635 F flex draper heads that were purchased new those two are included in the auction we also have a 2011 John Deere 612 CX 12 row corn head we have a very impressive lineup of late model John Deere tractors we have two 2013 John Deere 8360R tractors 2013 John Deere 9460R four-wheel drive 2013 John Deere 6170R 2013 John Deere 9360R four-wheel drive 2013 John Deere 8235R a 2013 John Deere 8235R and a John Deere 8760 four-wheel drive tractor. For the collector we have a pair of John Deere tractors one John Deere 70 model 70 and a John Deere G. We have a pair of 2013 John Deere 4940 self-propelled sprayers with 120 foot booms. We have three matching 2000 Kenworth W900 manure spreader trucks. We have a 2013 John Deere R450 self-propelled windrower. A matching pair of 2013 John Deere 569 premium round balers. Those three items you just talked about we we quit putting up hay a couple of years ago. I don't think they were run this year at all and maybe not much last year. We have a 2014 John Deere 1890C air seeder. A 2011 John Deere 1990 air seeder. A 2011 John Deere 1770 no-till planter. A pair of matching 2011 Great Plains 3S 4000 HD grain drills. We have a matching pair of 2015 Tempty double hopper 42 foot grain trailers. We have a 2013 pit stop nurse trailer with two 3200 gallon tanks. Tandem axle with the third aftermarket axle added with room for two totes and several tractor trucks, heavy trucks, and light fleet trucks. A full line of tillage equipment will be offered to include several pieces that were replaced new or purchased new in 2013. We will be offering a full line of machinery and equipment and support items. There's over 200 pallets of tools, parts, and small equipment, both farm and automotive parts and material. What are you planning on doing with your free time when the auction's concluded? I doubt there'll be a lot of free time. Got other things that we're doing and uh, uh, might not have as many late nights, but uh, we'll stay busy. Set your calendar again for Knight Farms Retirement Auction. Bidding will begin to close Tuesday, February 13th, 2018 at 10 a.m. at purplewave.com.